podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your guest host, Dr. Randall Williams, PhD. Today we're joined we're joined by Giannis Patelis, Ryan Callahan, Spencer Newharth, Corey Calkins, Corinne Schneider, Hunter Spencer, Brody Henderson, and our special guest today, Brian the Butcher Harmon. Brian, welcome. Thanks for having me. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eaters Four Verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. Brian, this is your first time playing Meat Eater Trivia. How do you feel about your chances? Um, uh, not, my expectations are very low. Fantastic. Given your profession, <laughs> I'd just like to note that this is a contest in which you want to hi- have the high score. Rather high score. Than, you, rather than why, don't score. You, why don't Got you it. tell the folks at home Traditional what you do? Traditional trivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As opposed to golf. Um, before diving into the stat of the week, I would like to note that I am simply reading from a script prepared by Spencer for the next few minutes. I'm grateful for his preparation. <laughs> Each week here on Trivia, we reveal a new stat. For the stat of the week this week, we're looking at my own performance. On average, I get 70% of questions right. In the hunting category, it's 68%. In the fishing category, 67%. In the conservation category, it's 72%. And in cooking, it's 70%. It's really no surprise that I excel in trivia because I am, after all, a doctor. Well, I didn't write that part. Oh, you know, come on now. like seventy percent in schools, like barely a C. Mm. I know, I'm horrified by looking at this. <laughs> C's get degrees, and then what they say? Uh, yeah, uh, Grandpa the surgeon would say, "You know what? Uh, C got you in medical school." He's like, he a became degree? a doctor. Yeah, doctor. Yeah. 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 Randall, I trust you as a doctor. Really? Mm-hmm. I think I would. Uh, because I'm calm and cool under pressure. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. Exactly it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You seem like you'd have good bedside manner. I could trust you. Yeah, I'm good at putting on the uh, the face, right? Uh, oddly aloof, like like most good surgeons are. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know what most good surgeons are like? I've, I've had to go see a couple. Oh, Not a lot of work. It sucks. That's a compliment, Randall. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean we we're aloof just getting like to know. We're, we're just getting to know each other, but apparently uh, <laughs> he's got a good read. <laughs> Here's our zero percenter question of the week, which tests how much knowledge players have retained from previous games. This question was from episode 456. The topic was woodsmanship, and nobody got it right. Merriam-Webster defines this five-letter word as, quote, a spout inserted in a tree to draw off sap. Hmm, I forgot it already. Yanni, you were I was here. here for that Brody one. was here. I was here, yeah. I no was recollection. Here. I I'm didn't say spigot. That's more Six. than five letters. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get it right? No. <laughs> Do we give up? I think we should. The correct answer was spile. S P I L E. The Not inc- one that sticks with you. No, no. I remember thinking that I didn't like this question when I first heard it, <laughs> and then I read it again when Spencer sent me this email, and it aggravated me once mm-hmm. more. Uh, the incorrect answers given were stipe, spout, spike, and crank. All also, of which make more sense. Yes. <laughs> we also have some housekeeping to get to. In a previous game of trivia, we had a question about the New River Gorge National Park. And while I was taking a victory lap at my correct answer, <laughs> I talked about an ancient river that was there before the New River. I pronounced the old river as the Tees River but listener Brent Brash wrote in to let me know that it's actually the Taze River. I guess I should have gotten a doctorate in English instead of philosophy. (laughs) (laughs) That's a weird thing for you to say, Randall. I know, I know. My degree is in history, though. Oh, you need to update your LinkedIn then, because that's where I got that information. Ah, well... I, I don't want to get You're into You're lying it. to somebody I, I, here, I don't Randall. want to get into advanced degrees here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> his multiple advanced yeah. degrees. He just got one on the side while he was getting it. Why, just, why would your LinkedIn say philosophy then? Um, Who are you trying to impress? So, so on the, in the <laughs> academic world, it's always a doctor of philosophy, like a doctor of med. You don't become a doctor of history. You have a doctor okay. of philosophy in history. Oh. Yeah. Room goes quiet. School Room goes quiet. quiet. Let's it's move not on. for you people. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Now, the Sydney index for today's round is a three, so our winner should get six, and I feel pretty good about that. 
With that, we're on to our game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I'm... It's so neat watching these kids live out their dreams. You know? Everybody's a winner here today. Yeah, this is my nightmare. We watched... A lot, of, a lot of kids got nice bucks over the weekend, but it's not not uh, yeah, stacking up to this suckers. moment right here. I feel like I'm in the Santa suit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel a little bit good, though? Because you should feel like you have a, a little better chance of winning today, being that he's not playing. Oh, no, no, no it's not. No. Steve, Steve said he didn't want a guest host because he couldn't win. <laughs> and I'm happy to be guest hosting because I can't lose. Mm. Mm. So actually, Philosophy. I feel I, I, while I don't like <laughs> yeah. while I don't like the camera trained right at me, I feel comfortable knowing I won't walk out of here with a big old L on my forehead. I, I think you're doing great, man. Thanks, Guess Brody. Guest host, so far you're the best one. Thanks, Brody. Sometimes Whoa. I'm the loser. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, fighting words, Randall. Sometimes I do lose. Um, yeah. So there's a chance you could take an L here. Now, uh, do you have any trivia questions for us? I do. I do. Let's move on. <laughs> Thanks, all. Question number one. The category of firearms. Oh, you put the answer on the board. Oh no, you didn't. Never mind. <laughs> uh, the acronym SAMI, most commonly associated with specifications for firearm cartridges, stands for what? And this is a multiple choice question. Your options are A, standards of arms and ammunition manual for industry. B, shooters and arms makers international. C, Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, or D, Scientific Ammunition Accuracy Measurement and Inspection. That's a lot of syllables, guys, and I nailed them all. You got the longest question ever already. I know. Sure. I just realized that as I was reading it <laughs> Spencer aloud. Spencer never does the A, B, C, D, but I did in this case just because I don't think people are going to mm. want to write all that stuff. You know this one, Brody? We'll find out. Okay. We've got an answer from Brody. I got an answer. We've got an answer from Ryan Callahan. I've looked at a lot of Sammy specs, but boy, I can't yeah, tell you. You used to do a lot of reloading, didn't you? Can't tell you what it stands for. You got any 30 out 6 reloads laying around? Yes. Well and good. How are we feeling? We ready? We ready for a reveal? Corey, we've got an answer? Yes, sir. Oh, wait, wait. Give me. I, I, lost, I lost my marker. This is very important. I'm sorry, Randall. Bam. I'll continue to keep everyone's attention while Phil looks for his marker. <laughs> is that what vamp means? I don't know. It's that's stage what does vamp terminology, mean? I think. Oh, vamp. Like fill, fill space. Do yeah, small yeah. Talk. Did I do it enough? You did it great. I found it. Okay, okay great. Why don't we flip vamp. our answers over here? Brian the Butcher has A. Hunter. A. Corey. D. Spencer. C. Brody. B. Cal A, Corinne A, and Giannis A. We have a correct answer in the room. The answer is C, oh. Sporting Arms and Ammunition That's Manufacturers nice. Institute. Did Purely you know that, Spencer? Purely a guess. Who had C there? Anyone? Spencer. I Spencer. did. Corinne had it and I X. I, X I noted that. I noted that, but in the moment, I couldn't keep track of what I was just so focused on reading the names and answers. Cal, Cal was so quick to that A, too. Mm. Wait, mm. Yeah, you, you I, looked at it, you're like, That's, this is a no-brainer. Well, like, I you don't could have understand. named it without. It, like, Institute is redundant. Like, I feel like we know it's the Institute. Are you challenging me on the name of this organization? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just explaining why I got it wrong. He's yeah. just like, that's a stupid name. Just... The <laughs> correct answer is C, Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers I think Institute. it's a stupid name. I think Sammy should change their name. That's why I changed my Thank name. Thank you. Sorry. Formed in 1926, Sammy is an accredited developer of standards for safety, reliability, and interchangeability in firearm, ammunition, and component manufacturers. You'll commonly hear of SAMI approving the latest new cartridge that goes to market, and you'll often hear the phrase SAMI spec used among hand loaders or rifle builders. And here's a fun fact for you. SAMI was among the leaders in the effort to rally firearms and ammunition manufacturers to support the Pittman-Robertson Act. Mm. Mm. Giannis, did you used to push your loads past the SAMI specs? No, sir. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's been done. <laughs> I tried to think about if I was the host there, which ones would I come up with? And I thought A and D were Randall. So then I was down to B and C, and I just guessed for C. You know, I've never had so much fun trying to come up with made-up acronyms. Okay. Well, then you haven't played the board game Balderdash. You should play that. That's absolutely true. Okay. 
Question two is hunting. Two species of this animal are the only trophies scored and recorded in the Boone and Crockett Club record book by a measurement of its two prominent front teeth. Hmm. Two species of this animal are the only trophies scored and recorded in Boone and Crockett by a measurement of its two prominent front teeth. So the answer is one animal, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Oh. Bro, if, do you know this? Uh, I'm not going to say anything. I got until this right. I get one right. If the answer was <laughs> the northern robin and the southern robin, mm -hmm. you'd just say robin. <clears throat> okay. I'm trying I feel to stay good. away from mammals. Though. Yanni, I got this one right. Starting out two and zero oh here. I don't think he's the only one. Good for you. Are you are you giving us a little lesson in smack talking today? No, no, I'm not. Scored by two front teeth. got to be the timber tiger. We all good? <laughs> oh, no. Looks like we're still waiting on a couple answers here. Saber-toothed cat. Oh. I can only think of one animal <laughs> with big teeth, front teeth. Oh, but how are those teeth? Are we getting with the front teeth? Are they if it smiled like We're out of questions. <laughs> God dang it. No. That's the time. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Why don't we flip our boards over and see who's got it? We got a couple. Got nothing. Brian the Butcher's got nothing. Got nothing. Hunter I'm says bear. Corey says bear. Spencer says walrus. Brody says walrus. Cal says all, all of his answers are crossed off. Yeah. Elephant. <laughs> Corinne says mountain lion. Like Giannis says walrus. The correct answer is walrus. To score a walrus, you add together the length of each loose tusk as well as four circumference measures of, east, mm. of each. An all-time Boone and Crockett Atlantic walrus must score at least a 95, while an all-time Pacific walrus must score at least 100. The take of walruses has been prohibited since 1972 under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. The current all-time Pacific walrus, scoring 147 and 4 eighths, was picked up in 1997 by Ralph Young, who located the massive trophy while flying the shores of Bristol Bay, beachcombing in his Super Cub. Two mm. species, please? What are the two species of walrus? Atlantic walrus and Pacific walrus. Okay. Two species of this animal. So it's the two. So those how do you right. measure oh, a hippo? That part of the uh, They're not in the Boone and Crockett Club. Only but... measures North American animals. Totally. Oh. That's part of the question. Oh. Oh. Does an Atlantic yeah, walrus airport. differ much from a Pacific? Just walrus? a little smaller, it seems. Okay. Or, or it's teeth. Are we good with the answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> Our next question comes in the category of conservation, sort of. Sort of. I didn't really label this one very... <laughs> Let's just go with it. Nobody cares. Yeah, maybe that was just an error in transposition between my various documents. Jack Olson's classic 1969 book, Night of the Grizzlies, which details the fatal maulings of two young women in Glacier National Park, was originally a three-part article for what popular magazine? Anybody reading magazines back in 1969? No. No. Hmm. Phil, how are we doing? You're doing great. We good on this time? This is fantastic. We're doing, yeah, just perfect on time. How's my, am Efficient. I sitting at the right height? I Every, feel my posture collapsing. You know, the, the more questions you ask me, the less uh, sort of confident you sound. Um, maybe just, <laughs> I just want to get it around. right. I okay. just want to get it right. It seems like oh, we, we have answers from almost everybody in the room. Are we ready to go to answers here? Whoa, you're really rushing us, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, you're not even giving well, us time to change our mind. I see all these boards like, down. Like, suss out the competition. I, I think I think the listeners prefer the action. Or you could take a second and ask me, Corinne, and Hunter about oh, uh, that's right. Phil's play that we went to on Friday. I'll save that for another Ooh. question. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask Corey, <laughs> are you confident in your answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't decided yet. That's why I'm trying to encourage some uh, crosstalk yeah. here. Uh -huh. Cal? Oh, no. Cal Bob I'm broke getting his some, whiteboard. There. I'm getting some bad vibes from Cal right now. I don't think he likes what I'm doing here. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I actually quite liked the pace. As okay, well. fantastic. <laughs> Randall, can I ask busy. you how confident you are in my answer? I, <laughs> I feel pretty good. You think anybody has this right? Mm, I bet someone. I okay. bet if you <laughs> kept the pace high, we could have more answers and thus more learning. I'm trying to accommodate Brody. <laughs> I'm accommodated. <laughs> okay, we're sufficiently accommodated in the back. The answer is Sports Illustrated. Oh, wow. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, whoa, whoa. Got... What? <laughs> what? You didn't ask us to We didn't uh, reveal the answers read, yet. read the answers from everybody. Yeah, okay. so that's why I need to focus oh, on what yeah. I'm doing instead of this band. <laughs> you just completely psyched yourself out the last two minutes. Uh, that's, I'm that's guessing sad. nobody got Hunter that, right? says Field and Stream. Brian says National Geographic. Corey, Outdoor Life. Spencer, National Geographic. Brody says National Geographic. Cal says Outdoor Life. Corinne says Outdoor Life. Giannis says Time. That is a zero percenter. Add to the list. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Olson's painstakingly researched account of the August 1969-67 killings of Julie Helgeson and Michelle Coons in two separate areas of the park stands as the definitive account of this tragedy, so much so that the event itself is most often referred to by the title of his book. The May 26th issue of Sports Illustrated featured a cover headline that read, The Grizzly, Enemy of Man, Must He Be Exterminated? Question Whoa. mark. And included a letter from publisher Gary Volk, who wrote the following. It is hard to accept the fact that the zoo image is not the real image, and that the captive bear conceals his hatred of man only because he has no choice. <laughs> we hope the menacing grizzly shown on this cover will help reinforce Olson's conclusion that man and bear cannot peacefully coexist in the wild. I didn't know that was his conclusion. I don't know either. That's just huh. what the guy in SI wrote. Yeah, what a I different th time. I thought, I thought he was going the other way when he started. Yeah, yeah. A very different time to be uh, bandying about ideas about should we exterminate a species. Yeah, especially for Sports Illustrated. People need to broaden their... at that point anyway. If, if People you... need to broaden their minds and understand that sometimes that's what coexisting is. You got to look at all. You, you look got at it from all sides. This time, yes, um, that's actually like very much coexisting. Like you're coexisting in their belly. <laughs> did you come across that uh, when you were doing your PhD research? You know what I did. Thanks for asking, Giannis. <laughs> so one of my favorite images of all time is the cover of that magazine, and I've stored it away in my brain for years and years for this little trick. What's the bear looking like? Is he snarling? He's roaring. He's sort of head in profile, like oh, this, okay. teeth up. Beautiful. That's Bigger the, teeth. That's the thumbnail right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Turn into you, you. Turn. Tune in on YouTube to see my face. <laughs> We're on to question four. <laughs> question four is in the category of fishing. <clears throat> Bill Lewis invented this iconic lure by adding BBs to a standard hard bait, resulting in what Outdoor Life magazine once declared to be quote, the most influential fishing lure of all time. Got some answers, hitting some whiteboards. That's a good sign. Some people puzzling, some people, some people squinting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Brian, you got this one. I, 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 I'm the most confident of this I answer feel, of, of I feel, all the ones. I feel pretty I'm good not, vibes coming from the left side of the room. I, is I this specific know. like you'd say uh, uh, um, an A5 shotgun? Um, it's a, it's a brand. Yeah. It's, it's a product. Okay. It's not like a, it's not a, a category or a type of lure. Okay. It's a, you would, this would show up on your receipt if you bought one. It's a good way to, to <laughs> set that <laughs> up, Randall. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how was that musical? I'm uh, sorry, not a musical, <laughs> a screwball comedy from the 1930s <laughs> among go. those who were in attendance this weekend. Phil knock it out of the park? It was great. Phil's a star. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wonderful. Show stealer. Wonderful. We knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Phil is electric. The, Show the... stealer is what I heard. Guys. And electric. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Did I... you guys shower him with flowers at the end? No, we showered him with wine. He came uh -huh. to the wine bar afterwards. Ooh. And uh he got Korean fried chicken, I think, and a and a glass of uh, an old fashioned. Old fashioned, that's right. Yeah. That's nice. awesome. that's that sounds, sounds much better than my Saturday night. Like old Corey Calkins <laughs> over there, what was freezing your, uh, on the top of a ridge top in twenty mile an hour winds. Mm -hmm. What was your cut you of the? Uh, what were what was your cut of the door, Phil? Oh, I don't find out until after the run of the show. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. 
I, it looks like we're all ready for the answer. I'll read yours first this time. <laughs> <laughs> Brian the Butcher says a rattle trap. Hunter says rattle trap. Corey says rattle banger. Banger. Hmm. Spencer says rattle trap. Brody says rattle trap. Cal says rattle trap. Corinne has a question mark. Giannis says rattle trap. The correct answer is rattle trap. Well. Launching what some have called the rattle revolution. <laughs> the rattle trap took over the bass fishing scene in the 1970s, and the Bill Lewis Lure Company has since sold more than 150 million of them. Inspiration for the lure's catchy name struck Lewis as he was driving his old Ford station wagon, which he had affectionately nicknamed, any guesses? The rattle trap. You guys got the it. Rattle banger. The rattle No, the rattle trap. <laughs> you're, are you looking at Corey's answer? I see. Uh, legendary pro angler Roland Martin credits the rattle trap as being, quote, very instrumental in my career and pointed out that, quote, very few bait companies have been able to exist on just one lure. Anybody caught a fish on a rattle trap? Caught a pierced, yeah. I pierced my mother's nose with a rattle trap. Really? Wow. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. We're Come, catching. Uh, was that the bone you were throwing to him? <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I had no idea. We no. haven't talked about this yet. No, we were uh, catching hybrids up at Clark Hill in Augusta. In the afternoon, they'll come and like boil up, and you troll these rattle traps around the outskirts of them, and every line goes. And so I'm trying to like pitch this out, pitch a rattle trap out, goes back, doesn't come forward Ugh. on the mom's face. Got to push the barb through. Cut it, bring it back out, and I'm upset because that particular size rattle <laughs> trap was the one was that the... they couldn't stand, <laughs> and now it had you know one mm. less set of treble hooks. Your mother priorities. is a saint. She is a saint. She still put up with your golf hobby after that ordeal. That's correct. Yeah, that was <laughs> forced that, into that golf. Was, that was before golf, so she didn't hold that against me. But. Fantastic. Was that what made you take up golf? Uh, no. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe she steered no. you towards golf from yep. fishing in an event to mm -hmm. prevent future yep. uh, puncture wounds. Yep. Had a few Had a few of those. Yeah, I remember the, um, we used to call them like a Charlie horse, but it was a top water plug that had the, the like, almost looked like. Propellers? Yeah, like a, a torpedo? Propeller, yeah. It was like an any bitty, like, um, mm -hmm. um, anyway, I throw one of those things into the bushes in our neighborhood, and my dad's with me, and I'm trying to get it out. And I finally, you know, set it loose, and he said he heard it whistle by him and then right into the <laughs> oh. top of my head. Oh. I, I had a, I think it was a rattle trap stuck in a bush, and we were fishing from a canoe in the Boundary Waters, and I chucked it up into the bank, and we paddle over to it, and my dad's trying to get it out, and a gust of wind just blows the canoe oh. into the hooks, and he stuck three fingers together <laughs> on one treble. Oh. <laughs> And he just wanted it though that you blame the wind. Yeah, it wasn't my fault at all. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wouldn't have grabbed it the way he had. Um, he put himself in that. That's position. why you're a doctor. Uh, yeah, we sh we could have used a doctor on that on that trip. On to question five. Unless there are any other fun uh, memories we'd like to recall about rattle injuries. trap anecdotes. Yeah. <laughs> question five is in the category of conservation. A proposal to dam this river. By some measures, North America's third largest, 300, mi 300 miles downstream from the town of Circle at the site of Rampart Canyon would have created a lake roughly the size of Lake Erie. I'll read that again because it's very poorly worded. <laughs> a proposal to dam this river, by some measures, North America's third longest, 300 miles downstream from the town of Circle at the site of Rampart Canyon would have created a lake roughly the size of Lake Erie. There's a lot of context clues in there, guys. If you're not familiar with this whole controversy, you can pick out some, pick mm. out some clues there. And <clears throat> I only know one town called Circle. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're picking up what I'm putting down then. Cal's staring at me. Brody's got an answer. Spencer's got an answer. I know a couple circles. I don't know any. Uh, how are we feeling on this side of the room? Poor. Poor? Mm. Hungry. Of a river. Very hungry. Mm. I'm Most feeling time. pretty hungry, too. You got plans? Not yet. Brody's got an answer. Brody's got his board down. Giannis is... Waiting on an so answer. Good. Cal's waiting on an answer. 
I don't know. I'm just going to use this time to apologize to the YouTube audience. Uh, I cut to the wrong camera, and I think you just stared at my head for about 10 seconds without nice. me noticing. <sighs> So what I a hope treat. You, hope you yeah. enjoyed the view. Yeah, you don't need a Easter egg. They should be thanking you. You're <laughs> a star. You're a yeah, local they're celebrity. like, good. It's a great break from show Randall. Stealing. Electric show stealing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, it nice was... head of hair on the kid. I mean, geez. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a frame around it if it was mine. <laughs> it was referenced no minimum than I think three times how handsome Phil was in the play. They kept talking about how good looking he was. I think they called him handsome. Debonair. Um, Were you in uh, period? He was, he was the love interest. Black top. Um, Can't teach that. Well, I think. We need to you need to set this. How would you rate the other people on stage? Was just go, the, just this, name them. This by was name. how they described him. When Phil entered the stage, every character was swooning. Uh, oh, they really it, there was uh, oh. the energy changed in the theater. So it's oh. kind of is that how your normal life is, Phil? I was gonna say it's like when he walks into the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it's, it's my burden to bear. <laughs> people are constantly putting frames around my hair. It's, yeah, I'm gonna help Phil out here and uh, change the subject. Thank you, <laughs> Corey. Answer. Why don't we reveal our answers? Hmm. We do have a correct answer in the room. Can we, Brian, uh, can we, oh, you're going to read the Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, Sorry, I just Randall. wanted to set up that suspense. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah. <laughs> am, I, learn. am I correct? Brian the Butcher says Missouri. Hunter says Missouri. Corey says Columbia. Spencer says Yellowstone. Brody says Colorado. Cal has a blank board. Corinne has a crossed out answer. <laughs> and Giannis says the Yukon. The correct answer is the Yukon River. Nice. Darn it, Yanni. Good job. First, pro first put forth by the Army mm. Corps of Engineers in 1954, the highly controversial proposal to dam the Yukon at Rampart Canyon, or, quote, the Narrows, entailed a 530-foot-high and 4,700-foot-long structure. Boosters including most prominently U.S. Senator Ernest Gruning, hoped it would provide enough cheap electricity to attract industry to Alaska, and if completed, the reservoir would have been the world's largest man-made body of water at an estimated 270 miles long and 80 miles wide. Hunters and anglers from across the country were among the most outspoken critics of the idea, as it would have flooded the sloughs and marshes that make the Yukon Flats one of the most productive waterfowl breeding grounds in North America. Lake Erie. Yeah. So that was a clue. There's not a lot of places you could uh, put a lake the size mm -hmm. of Lake Erie without flooding some stuff. By what measure is the Yukon River the third largest? Um, there's Volume? Like a length. Length. I sh yeah. That's yeah, a well, you, you changed the wording of the question since you sent me this email, so that's partially my fault, too. No, Phil, it's my fault. <laughs> I feel like this has all been pretty scattershot. <laughs> and I haven't been as I haven't been as communicative with you. I just want to let you know it started off great. It's kind of uh, I, it's it's unraveling. <laughs> oh, I think this is great. I, I think I think I, I think I'm I, having a great time. Yeah, Randall. everybody's having a great hey, time. I've been in your seat. It's a lot of work to put this together. Oh yeah, I was planning on doing it all yesterday. Oh and, <laughs> Pull and yourself <laughs> together, my Randall. My day fell apart. <laughs> Phil, we've now oh, gone. Yeah, we've now my, been my through part. five questions. We're halfway through our game of trivia. Can we have a score update, please? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, we've got Corey and Corinne with zero points. They'll they'll get there. And then we've got Hunter, Cal, and Brian, all with one point apiece. Brody has two, and tied up in first place are Spencer and Giannis with three points. Uh, this is by far and away the worst That's game Spencer. I've ever played, I feel. So, congrats, well, Doctor. <laughs> I guess. Cal, I got, I got a couple coming up for you that are mm. you know, you're gonna like these. Pressure's on. Do you have a golf <laughs> bone for Brian? I'm getting trying. Big, oh, big there's, fish bite early. There's a, there's a bone coming later. <laughs> big old bone coming later. I probably won't even... I probably won't <laughs> now, even now this is a family show. No, no. Ah. That, please, please. <laughs> Question six is in the category of cooking. This term refers to the intramuscular fat content in a cut of meat and is one of the criteria for USDA grading. This term refers to the intramuscular fat content in a cut of meat and is one of the criteria for USDA grading. We've got some answers in the room. Cal, feel good? Feel good. Feel better? Feel this might be better. 100%. Thank you, doctor. I, I, mm. I wanted to get one of those out that. there in the Come world. On. Yeah, especially after you threw a but zero. It, it's also one of those that can, you know, if you get the brain blockage, it could stump you. Mm. It could stump you. 
Randall, tell folks about the question that you wanted to do that was some movie reference with a bumper sticker. Oh, yeah. And then you thought it was too obscure. Yeah, the, the Just movie... Just ask the question. Yeah. I can't. I can't. It's it's not... Well, I could ask the question. Are you familiar with a, 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 a film where the character says... He's got a bumper sticker on his truck. He, he's he'd already rather be bow hunting. Do you know this movie? Nope. Yes, yeah, so no one get it. I was going to play this clip. It's one of my favorite clips. Are we all done with the uh, <laughs> movies? <laughs> kicking and screaming. It's a Noah Baumbach film. Oh yeah. And they're getting into an argument about a parking spot, and the guy's girlfriend gets out of the truck to yell at the uh, the man who's taking her spot, and the guy the character goes. I don't think we should be doing this. He says he'd already rather be bow hunting. Let's just leave him alone. <laughs> would have been a zero percenter. We've got answers in the room. Brian, the butcher, says marbling. Hunter says marbling. Corey's blank. Spencer, marbling. Brody, marbling. Cal, marbling. Corinne, marbling. Giannis, marbling. The correct answer is marbling. It's not as much fun when everybody gets on. Well, Corey didn't get it, so <laughs> play it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's actually more fun don't, then. Don't put those vibes out, Cal. Cal said it's not as much fun if everyone gets it, so Corey got it wrong. So it's oh, actually more oh, fun. See, yeah, it's way, it's way see more I'm fun. laughing. Yeah. No, it's more fun. That would have been a tough one to miss for the new nickname. Cal. According to the tech. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been uh, in the final nail. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even make that connection. That, yeah. that could have been your bone, but I got another one for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> According to the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, marbling is the intermingling or dispersion of fat within the lean. The minimum degree of marbling required for carcasses to be graded prime is slightly abundant. <laughs> That's good. That's that narrows it down. There are all these great descriptors that coincide with the different gradations, and they go from like, abundant moderately abundant slightly abundant and they keep going down and i was just so tickled by uh something being slightly abundant <laughs> it was it was just such a fun <laughs> concept you know, for US, me that i US made this a question so <laughs> yeah. is there any wild game that is good marbling wild pigs pigs i've seen mm. some marbling pigs. in uh, some sheep maybe bears and muskox Mu yeah mm. bit black bears for sure yeah. No guy look like they'd have good marbling, but no. I've never been into one. Hmm. Hmm. Did not. Question seven. I don't have a category for this one, but it could be under gear. Order these cartridges from smallest to largest by bullet diameter. Oh, can I use my calculator? No. I don't know. <clears throat> from, from what to what? From smallest to largest <sighs> by bullet diameter. We have a 338 Winchester Magnum. 375 H and H, an eight millimeter Remington Magnum, and a nine three by sixty two Mauser. <laughs> What's so funny, Yanni? Randall. Ah, uh, smallest to largest. Smallest to largest. I don't know how I feel about this question. Why? I just said I don't know. Why, but are you I'm going to think about it and give you an answer. You're not happy about it, or you're not sure if you're happy or Probably sad about it? Probably just because I'm a little perplexed right now. A lot of numbers swirling around in folks' heads. Some Corinne's got her calculator out. Oh, no, I'm uh, <laughs> only joking. Only joking. <laughs> Furiously scribbling. Ah, there's oh, such a guess. Clock is ticking. Brody's doing the thing where he gets down low and puts his hand over his hat and covers his face with the board. That's a textbook. That's Brody textbook move. Brody mm -hmm. working. <laughs> Randall couldn't write this whole episode yesterday because he killed a big giant bull, right? Not a big giant bull, but big enough. Yeah. I did. I was going to do all of this preparation that has been evidently absent uh, yesterday afternoon, but I shot a bull at eight in the morning and got home well after dark. Uh, and then I woke up at 2.30, and I just thought about trivia until 4.30, and then I got up and <laughs> just sat there staring at the screen. That's prep, Randall's just thinking about the thing. I was surprised that you email so late. Uh, well, I had a similar thing. I was like, I got to get this to Randall before Monday, and so then I was up late last I'm, night. I'm in bed by ready. nine, hmm. just so yeah. you know. Hmm. Didn't How many grizzly up. bears did you see? Saw two grizzly bears and heard one in the middle of the night when I jumped out of my tent to go to the bathroom go, 
and run off to the trees and break a bunch of stuff really so, yeah it was uh, it was not a i i turned on the longest movie i had on my phone and just let it play noise after uh -huh. that jurassic world dominion <laughs> <laughs> two hours and 44 minutes aren't there like that was in animals the, roaring and in distress and well that's you know someone pointed that out to me they're like the last movie i'd want to watch is people being chased by a giant beast yeah. and i said it didn't even occur to me i I just looked at what Amazon, you know, the automatic downloads mm -hmm. and two hours and 44 minutes. I said, I'm just going to play this and uh, turn the volume up and lay there in my bag and stare at the tent. Uh, so that was that was my Saturday night. <laughs> I feel like one of the Jurassic movies, they like feed them sheep. So you could have had like sheep. Yeah, the first Jurassic your, uh... Park, they feed a they feed a, uh, a goat. Oh, yeah, a goat, goat yeah. to a tyrannosaur, but they also feed a cow to the uh, velociraptors. Yeah. That's oh. when See? Dr. Alan Grant says... You breeding velociraptors or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's that very dramatic opening scene. Yeah. Do we have our answers? My, sorry, my computer went to yes. sleep. Um, why don't we turn our answers over here? Bro, wow, that is just calculus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Th I think that's an answer just simply no, 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 intended. Dis disregard. This. Oh, this oh, I see. Answer. You've listed them. Cal yes, <clears throat> eight millimeter. Oh. Can we? Yeah, sorry, Phil. Uh, I didn't. Put, I didn't put letters down. Um, you, you I will do. Hey, well, you do. You, you do. You. You're gonna have to keep track of this. That's fine. Brian the Butcher says eight millimeter, three thirty eight, three seventy five, nine three by sixty two. Hunter says three thirty eight, eight millimeter, nine three by sixty two, three seventy five. Corey says nine three by sixty two, eight millimeter, three thirty eight. 375. Spencer says 8 millimeter, 338, 375, 93 by 62. I feel like I'm recounting orders at a restaurant or we something. We can tell this Phil, is just... if we get it right. Or... Brody. Brody says 8 millimeter, 338, 93 by 62, 375. Cal says 8 millimeter, 338, 375, 93 by 62. Corinne says 93 by 62, 338, 375. 8 millimeter, Giannis is 8 millimeter, 9, 3, 338, 375. Are you having fun? Oh, I I was planning on just going C A D B. Um, <laughs> the correct answer. <laughs> no. Sorry. Would you like sorry, Randall? I'm I'm no, messing no, this fine. up just it's as fine. much as you do. We need to okay. Keep going. The correct answer is C A B D D B. Oh, That's eight. Brody got it right. Brody's the only one who got it right. Dang it. Uh the nine the nine point three got us. Can you read yeah. the uh n the numbers instead the, of C A B D? The Brody's board. Yeah. Eight millimeters the smallest. Brody's board. Okay, yeah. Eight mil sorry, I'm all confused because of all these numbers. The correct answer is C A D B. That's eight millimeter Remington Magnum. Three thirty eight Winchester Magnum. Nine three by sixty two Mauser mm. and three seventy five H and H. What is the diameter on a nine nine three by sixty two Mauser? Close uh, close point, to a three seventy five. Right? It's point three six six. Point three six six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I knew a seven millimeter was a point two eight four. Every millimeter is like four, uh, like the equivalent of yeah, four. Yeah, I got four point something here. So four a, point a, something. A three thirty eight is an eight six, so it, like an eight six blackout. Um, and then an eight millimeter is three two three, like a a three twenty five wisdom. So if you knew one or more of those, you could have sort of played around and fudged the numbers. My best friend, Christian Hughes, had a Winchester Model 70 in 9.3 by 62 Mauser stolen from his home in Seattle. It never turned up. Bummer. But a handgun that was taken in the same robbery was returned to him by the Seattle Police Department after it was used in court as evidence in a homicide trial. Oh, did he keep it? Uh, he sold it. He sold it because he thought it was weird, and then the guy that bought it was like, that's, he was like kind of into it. <laughs> you know, like war relics or something. It was yeah. pretty strange, but yeah, that was. I think I'd hold on to it. Yeah, he had a whole um, cabinet full of guns. These people broke into his house and they rolled it down the stairs and knocked out his front door with the cabinet and put it in the back of a Honda uh, Accord and drove. Was off. it you? Where there's a no. Will, there's yeah, a way. It seems oddly specific. His neighbor, you know his details. neighbor, his neighbor watched the yeah, whole. Yeah, we were thing saying happen. his back door was unlocked. It's crazy. So Question eight. You, <laughs> you came up with this when you were going through the Sammy book, right? You're like, oh, there's my reloading. No, book. no. I, I always I th I think it's fun to memorize the what's what from metric to to standard. I agree, Randall. Did Good you know question. you had that Brody, or was any of that yeah. guessing? No, I knew it. Mm. I think I think cartridges and all that stuff is is ripe for trivia. Mm -hmm. Question eight: 
comes to us in the category of fishing. This fishing equipment manufacturer got its name when its Swedish predecessor, A.B. Orfabriken, sorry, A.B. Orfabriken, didn't want to throw anyone off, which translates to Watch Factory LLC merged with its U.S.-based distributor. That's the question? What was the question? What's question eight now? This fishing equipment manufacturer got its name when its Swedish predecessor, A.B. Orfabriken, which translates to Watch Factory LLC, merged with its U.S.-based distributor. Brody, you got this? Mm -hmm. We have an answer from Brody. Mm. Everybody else is... You do, Brody? I know. Yep. What part of it (laughs) did you know? All of it. (laughs) <laughs> he knew it right away. Let's see. But I could flip it over and I could look like a real ass, I guess. Oh, Brody, I feel confident. <laughs> I think you got it. I didn't know you were going to be here. Otherwise, I would have... Wasn't supposed to you be. You wouldn't ask this question? Well, <laughs> I. it's one thing to come up with trivia. And then as you're reading the questions, you have a sense of like who's doing well yeah. and who mm. might, you know, like... Yeah, Spencer, I want to host sometime. Can I host? For sure. All right. It's like... It's like you know, selecting your pitcher based on who's up at bat, right? Mm, that's um, good. Mm-hmm. This fishing equipment manufacturer got its name when its Swedish predecessor, oh, A.B. Orfabriken, which translates to Watch Factory LLC, merged with its U.S. Let's based over, distributor. Right? Easy. Let's <laughs> flip Hold the up. boards oh. over, folks. Mm. Yeah. Ah, dang it! I was going. The, the answer was sort of in the question. A, B, oh, uh, let's go around the room. Penner, Brian in the butcher. Penner International. Says Penn International, Hunter, Blank, Corey, Shakespeare, Spencer, Penn, Rapala. Penn International is what had me. Brody, yeah. Abu, yeah. Garcia, yeah. Abu Garcia, yeah, Cal's already yeah. erasing, Corinne's panel. turned her board yeah, over, and Abu Gianna Garcia. says Shimano. Right. Shimano. Shimano. Thank you. <laughs> How's that feel, <laughs> Randall? It's good. Shimano. You know, it's good. <laughs> I'm just, I was getting ahead of myself. I'm all flustered because I did the thing in the wrong order again. And so I appreciate the correction. (laughs) He appreciates it. AB Orfabriken was founded in 1921 Mm. as a manufacturer of precision timepieces and various instruments, including taxi cab meters. Two decades later, they began to produce fishing reels as the founder's son was an enthusiastic angler. So that's the Abu. Where do we get Garcia? In the 1950s, the New York-based Garcia Corporation began to import and market Abu reels, including the signature Ambassador baitcasting reel, which was introduced at the New York World's Fair in 1954. Abu acquired the Garcia Corporation in 1980, at which point the iconic brand name stuck. Is there still a World's Fair? That's a great question. In Chicago, right? Well, that's like... Well, it used to rotate every... Yeah. It used to rotate every now. I, that's I'll be honest. That's one area of knowledge that completely eludes me. I find World's Fairs to be very curious. Yeah, like it, it struck... you read that book, uh, The Death in the White City. Oh yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to live uh, in that neighborhood. Oh, cool. Hyde Park. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually didn't know uh, when I was coming up with this question. I just thought I have no idea where Abu Garcia comes from, mm-hmm. and I looked it up, and I thought that was interesting. My dad's got a couple old ambassadors. Good. Famous real. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah, what does that have to do? <laughs> the ambassador really just talked yeah, about? Yeah. I'm kidding. Well, uh, A.B. or Fabrican, as we all know, A.B.U. That's that's the A.B.U. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil, can we have a score update? That's Brody question eight. It's down. time for an update. <laughs> well, that's some good men. Yeah, it's a way to remember. Uh, we've got uh, Corey, Corinne, Hunter, Cal, and Brian are all eliminated from the, the running, but we have Spencer... Giannis with four points apiece, and then in first place with five is Brody Henderson. Hmm. All right. Well, it's anybody's game still with two questions left. (laughs) (laughs) Question nine comes to us in the category of cooking. This type of pepper, often used as a filling in stuffed green olives, lends its name to both a loaf-style lunch meat as well as a tangy cheese spread found on one of Augusta National Golf Club's most iconic concession items. Could have had this a little earlier in the lineup. Yeah. Made us feel a little better. 
You know what? I planned to reorder my questions to sort of account for the difficulty of each, but then uh, I had to send them to Phil, and I just ran out of time to do that. But so. then you didn't. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like we've all got it. <laughs> Why don't we flip the boards over? You're all right. It's Pimento. On the board. This was the only golf-related question I could think of. <laughs> Often confused with cherry peppers, pimentos are large, red, heart-shaped chili peppers, and the namesake of both pimento loaf and pimento cheese. According to Taste of the South magazine, the pimento cheese sandwich at the Masters has become as famous as the tournament's green trophy blazers. If you'd like to put a wild spin on this is watch this one. Okay. If you'd like to put a wild <laughs> spin on this southern staple, you can find Lucas Leaf's recipe for fish sliders with pimento cheese at themeateater.com. Thank have you, you had Randall. a pimento cheese sandwich at the <clears throat> Masters? I uh, I have, yes. They're it's, delicious. What's the verdict? Oh, they're yeah, good. they're great. They're yeah. great. I wouldn't call them more famous than the actual green jacket. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> as, 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 that's a little bit. As, well, it's as, coming yeah, from Taste of the South sandwich? magazine. I would yeah. think someone their... who came up with the pimento cheese sandwich is probably who made that proclamation. Could be a dollar fifty. Well, I'd like to know yeah. which one's been around longer: the pimento cheese sandwich or the green jacket? The green jacket. Green jacket is nineteen thirties. Bobby Jones, right? Pimento cheese mm. sandwich it's is... got to be. I have no earlier idea. than that. <laughs> <laughs> I would think pimento cheese makes a good burger too. I, oh, oh yeah. 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 When I asked you about this Friday, I was totally I was trying to think. Okay, what might he ask? <laughs> and I thought maybe he'll do a birdie is one under eagle. Yeah. Two. What would a hole? What's in, next? <clears throat> what's next? Yeah. It's the bird with the largest wingspan, wingspan in North Oceania. America. This yeah. came from the board game. Um, oh, that would be brilliant. That, we have this question in the board game. Yeah, yeah. that would have been brilliant. Wow. Mm. I don't know the answer. You would never get one of these, Yanni. <laughs> it's an albatross. David albatross. Chang recommends putting the, I believe, the chicken sandwich and the pimento cheese sandwich mm. together. Combining. Yeah, yeah, the master's concessions are legendary. I'm, I'm going in 2024. Are you? Beers are cheap, too. Mm-hmm. And I, Very excited. Is it true that all of the food is wrapped in green paper? So yeah, that it's, all, it's it, all super. So if it goes on the ground, the cameras don't pick it up and mm. it looks like... <laughs> But but I mean the the, the jackets the, are green too, and that's a lot of obviously the bird noise is piped in. Yeah, mm. the theories are wild. Like, have you ever seen a squirrel on the? I've on never Augusta? seen a bird, a squirrel. Nothing. They should pipe in some uh, wild turkey gobbles. <laughs> that would be nice. This spring be a nice touch. Red <laughs> Uh, since everybody got that right, I don't think our leaderboard has changed much, Phil. But. If I'm wrong, please tell. Nope, we've got Giannis and Spencer with five, Brody with six. So Brody's got to slip up, and they've got to oh, that'd be pull fun. it together. That'd be fun. <laughs> Question 10 comes to us in the category of hunting. Which 20th century U.S. president shot his first deer at the Texas ranch of his running mate only nine days after his election? It's a fun question. Yeah, that's a good one, Randall. Thanks, Phil. Running me. A lot of lot of sort of hmms and haws. Maybe some breakthroughs, some revelations in the cows furrowing his eyebrows and you know this, Brody? I feel pretty good. Oh, the last board is. No, well, Corinne's thinking. No, wait, do I feel good? <clears throat> Brody's Brody seems to have been feeling good, and now no longer is certain. I don't think I know my running mates well enough. Mm. Are mm. he's doing the thing again? Is everyone done? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it interesting. Let's turn them over. Let's turn them over. The Butcher says John F. Kennedy. Hunter says W. Corey says Bush Sr. Spencer says Bush. Brody says JFK. Cal says George W. Corinne says Ronald Reagan. Giannis says George Bush. There is a correct answer in the room. It's John F. Kennedy. Mm. Dang it. Brody. 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 Who is his running mate, Brody? Do you know? Lyndon Johnson. LBJ. LBJ. A Texan. 
There we go. Smart. Famous text. According to William Manchester's 1967 book, Death of a President, Lyndon Johnson brought the Mount of the Buck to the White House and insisted it be displayed in the Oval Office. Now, whether or not JFK took to the experience remains a point of contention. Relying on interviews with Jacqueline Kennedy, Manchester maintained that Kennedy was haunted by the memory of shooting the deer. Upon hearing this version of events, LBJ was recorded as saying, Forcing the poor man to go deer hunting? Hell, he not only killed one deer, he insisted on killing a second. Mm, I like that version. I like that version, too. I do, too. I do, too. No need for a tiebreaker. I believe Brody is our champion. Two-point win he had. And, well, uh, can we hear the tiebreaker question? Very sad applause. <laughs> How many... Just uh, for fun. You yeah, got yeah. some time. Let's throw it out there. Uh, did I go too fast? I was asking Do I need to kill time? No, no, this, no was okay. a pretty, this was a pretty long episode. It was good. Average. Of our 154 national forests, how many begin with the letter S? Oh, wow. Wow. Shoshone. Sequoia. Samson. Sequoia National Samson. Forest. Way off. <laughs> I'm looking for a number. Yeah, I know. Not a name. Seven. <laughs> the answer's 19. Mm. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Brody, as today's champion, I congrat. Well, you're today's champion. I just phrased that incorrectly, so it sounded as if I had won. But as today's <laughs> champion, you can give five hundred dollars to the conservation organization of your choosing. Do you uh, feel like you won, Randall? You know, it went better than I thought. Um, <laughs> Randall, you did great. It's going to take a day mm-hmm. or two for me to fully process, and then I'm going to listen and read all the. You comments. were very entertaining. <laughs> Thanks, Brody. I'm trying to bring it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> where, where would you like the money to go to, Brody? Uh, we just got off a sweet uh, two-day youth hunt, uh, Montana youth hunt for mule deer. So we're going to do the uh, Mule Deer Foundation. Timely. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yes. The Mule Deer Foundation thanks you, I, I hope so. <laughs> I assume. Spencer, it says here in my notes now mm-hmm. that I'm supposed to throw it to you mm-hmm. to plug the tournament, which comes... Next week. Next week. It's my favorite stretch of the year. We have four episodes. It's the Meat Eater Trivia Tournament. We're going to crown a champion of Meat Eater Trivia for 2023. We start with 20 players. By the end of it, uh, we have one person who gets their name on the plaque. That's coming up. We have two qualifying episodes, followed by two championship episodes. The championship is a two-part episode. Uh, I'm very excited. Please go listen. Fantastic. Thanks, gang. This was fun. Randall, you did great. (laughs) Thanks, Randall. Very good. (laughs) 